evening, YouTube Wargamers. This is the second video I'm working on in quick succession. Just finished up a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, hub, an update on my uh, 40K stuff, and I'm going to jump right into uh, fantasy here. And the envelope that I have been waiting for has finally arrived. I did open it, and I'm not going to show you the other side of where it's from because it's got my address on it. But uh, I had mentioned before in a previous hobby update that I would ordered some special decals off of a uh, the uh, guy off the Round Table of Bretonia. It's a kind of a well-known uh, Bretonia page. Yes, there's uh, there's many of us out there, and we are uh, not quite the dying breed that some of you might think. Anyways, so. I've been working up my 40k force, and one of the tough things about fielding Bretonians, I'm sorry, did I just say 40k force? I have been working on that, but uh, this is about the Bretonians. One of the tough things about doing the Bretonians is they get relatively little attention by GW. Uh, you can't even technically field an army right now. But then also the painting is challenging, and I think the painting is more important on Bretonians than it is in any other force uh, because they focus so much on heraldry. And I will pull off my... Uh, my, the, the one lance that I do have completed here. So I had put pictures of this. Let me flip this back to macro. This is the one thing I don't like about this camera. You actually have to manually switch it. And i um, really pleased with how this came out, but I think the colors all need to be different. But you can see that you kind of need to have uh, individual shields, individual heraldry for uh, each of the knights. I think you do for it to look kind of right. And... Uh, so these are all GW ones, but the problem is, is they're getting a little old. And they're tough to find. They're getting a little expensive on the internet. And expensive to find, you know, sometimes 10-year-old decals. When you, when you try to apply them, they fall apart, or they're discolored, they're yellowing. So I was looking around, and uh, I stumbled on this guy uh, who is recommended as also a member of the site. I'll post a link to the site. Uh, from Citadel 6 Productions. Citadel 6 Productions? Citadel, Citadel 6 Custom Designs. There it is right there. I will post his uh, webpage, though. He might not want his address on there. I'll, I'll change that off. Um, and got to talking with him, and he does, if you go on his website, he does both historically accurate and fantastical designs for Bretonians. And so he and I got to chatting, and... What I wanted to do was kind of get a sample of both the historical and the fantasy side. So, for example, for my Grail Knights, I decided that I wanted to have them be set up as actual, have the heraldry of actual English knights. And what I decided to go through, or, or go with, and he has these in here, I'm going to pull these out first, is the heraldry of... Uh, folks, and he has uh, Agincourt uh, in this case. Now, those of you purists are going to tell me that uh, there's very little horse mounted combat on the English side at Agincourt. Yes, this is true. Um, in fact, let me turn the macro on. Or off. Am I on macro now? What's happened here? There we go. So it goes through, and there's actually six sets, and I've got a number. Oops. There we go. And I've got a number of ones to go through. Yeah, let's see if I can get some of the glare to come down this maybe so you go the whole way in from henry v to duke of york john de Vere, and um what he did so this is authentic decals or authentic heraldry and the decals are set up to go right on bretonian models so you've got the shields you've got the left and right hand side turns out they're called trapper shields i didn't know that the shields on the uh the clothy part of the horse and then you can even go as far down and all the little individual shields that are on each of the uh kind of all over the barding of the horse. And so he's got four of these, and it goes the whole way down through you know, kind of the whole way back. And what my plan is, is to do all of my Grail Knights. I'm not going to have this many, but to have all of the Grail Knights done as authentic characters. Because I think, the, if you remember, the way I had it set up, I will grab them off my shelf again. So these guys, these are my, this is my uh, Knight's Errant Block. And these guys all have really simple uh, heraldry on their shields. Because I kind of would be changing this kind of midstream, all I'm going to say is, oh, well, these guys haven't earned their formal heraldry yet. These guys are just rookies going out trying to make a name for themselves. 
Whereas the more senior you get, obviously with the Grail Knights, the more elaborate your heraldry is going to be. So I decided to go with that, uh, with these guys. Uh, and next up, what I did, uh, I don't like fielding a lot of men-at-arms, but they are kind of important. And so what I did for this, this is an example of the... Um, I'm going to just pop this stuff open. So if you can see that. Um, so this is the fantasy ones. And you can go through here and you can just see that. Uh, and, again, and again, there's enough for the knights, their unit, their banners. Oops, looks like my video finished rendering. Um, unit banners. And again, for all of the, uh, the individual smaller shields on there. If you wanted, you could do the, the trumpeters, banners, a little bit that hangs down. Um, but these are all just uh, for your... They're, they're made up, but they look kind of authentic. And I'm just going to pull one of these out. And so what I had him do, and he, he can custom make uh, some of these. And I haven't put these on yet. Oops, there's the direction sheet. There's me shaking the camera. But they look really good so far. And then on the back side, here is another set. So these are a little different. And again, these look more authentic, but they aren't, again, they're fantasy. Oops, they're fantasy. So they're, uh, they're not authentic, but they look very Bretonia-ish. So I've got these guys, and that'll be for my uh, Knights of the Realm, maybe for some of the uh, questing knights, just to put on there. And then the last thing I ordered, again, I was when I was... I, was, I will digress. I was talking about um, my men-at-arms. And so what I wanted to do was for my men-at-arms, I picked... Oh, sorry, bumping the camera again. Uh, the heraldry of uh, who will end up being my army's general. and like They will have brought their men-at-arms with them. So what he did was he custom-made... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 32... Um, shields for my men-at-arms. Then you've got a lot of the extra stuff down here. So you'll see some of the models. I mean, they'll have small places for, like, your champion's chest and spare, champion's left arm, drums, miscellaneous shields. And you can even do banners down here. I don't think I'm going to do the banners. I think I'm just going to use the uh, GW-provided banners and take one of these and put it in the center there. So I had him do 32 of these. I've got some extra, maybe for uh, mounted yeoman. Although I don't think they can take shields, can they? I don't actually have any of those. But I'll have extras for, you know, something else in the army. So I had him do uh, half for uh, Henry V and then half for the, the Duke of York. And you can it's just a minor difference between the two, you can see. There's a name for that. I don't know what it is. Somebody on here will probably correct me. So... What I'm going to do now is, uh, now that these have come in, I'm just, I started priming up or doing some base coats on some of my men-at-arms. And so I'm going to take a break now. Oh, and the other thing that came with this is he was nice enough to include, uh, if you want to, well, you might be able to see it here. If you want to make your own standards using some of these, which are more authentic. Is, do I have the... Nope, I had the macro on. Apologies. So these are their actual um, their banners. If you want to be able to make your own, you can take these and it, it tells you to get a drill bit and you hollow out the, uh, the banner bear's hand and you, and you can put these in there and then put those on. They all come with, uh, with directions. I'm going to give them a read. I'm going to paint up or just do maybe some base coats on the models and uh, try applying some of the decals and let you know how it turns out. So I will be back in just a flash. Hello, folks. Well, it might be only a few seconds for you. It's actually uh, the next day. I just ran out of time and I, of course, uh, had difficulty in uh, turning out the uh, quick turnaround test models as I normally do. Excuse me. But uh, I wanted to... to to show you guys some of the work that I did. But first, take advantage of this to show you some of the detailed, you know, some of the, the designs that you get uh, from Citadel 6 uh, 
the transfers, the decals. I mean, you can just see, uh, and, and you can hand choose a lot of these. Uh, I just want to make sure I, I made that point. But on to what you're really concerned about and what I really made this video for, uh, to show what they look like on the figures. And so what I did, and I'm going to switch this to macro. Sorry for the camera shake. There we go. Uh, what I did was, as I made, I had a, uh, a batch of eBay men-at-arms to go through and a uh, working through some of the Pegasus Knights that I have. And we'll see if I can uh, zoom this in a little bit. Look at that. Sweet. So what I did first was these guys just happened to be on a, uh, the uh, uh, wooden, I don't know why I'm completely blanking out on this. The, uh, this is where they mount the, uh, the wooden stakes for the bowmen. And so that would be, that'd be an easy one for me to do a quick, quick paint job on. Turned out to be anything but quick because I take forever and I was trying to come up with a new paint scheme. Anyways, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the decals. And as you can see, I think they came out really well. Now, I don't have the sheet. Hold on, let me, uh, let me put this down really quick. Because there is something, uh, was a ch slight challenge that I had, and it had more to do with me than it did the, uh, any problems with the decals themselves. If I can find it, yep, here it is. Okay, so you can see here, extreme zoom, let's zoom out a little bit, where you can see this, these lines here, that's where you cut out and it goes right up against the inside of the, uh, the shield. So they're really close cuts. Let's put some glare on, let me get that out of the way. Uh, I didn't like how it looked. Uh, it looked very clean and stark up against some uh, uh, men at arms that aren't. So what I did was as I went through and I just hand brushed in like alternating colors. So if I had, a, it, was a, it was a blue quadrant of the shield, I put red behind it and vice versa with the blue. So that's how they came out. Uh, I'll go a little bit more into details in the process used to put them on, but I think they look really good and there's no way I could ever hand paint those things on. So definitely for a tabletop level, uh, they, they are, are great looking. Uh, I also wanted to put together one that looked, had, had some of the shields on a, uh, uh, one of the horse models and I didn't, I didn't have a horse one ready to go, uh, or, you know, a cavalry mount. So I just picked one of the Pegasus. And then of course I was like, well, I can't just start painting this and paint the back. I have to paint the whole thing. And that's what took so long. So here's a, uh, mostly finished Pegasus. I still have to do the base. But anyways, again, we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about this. So here's how this turned out. And you can see that the color's a little different. And again, this is my fault because I didn't really look too closely at which decal I wanted to pick uh, before I painted. So I could probably color match that a little bit better. I ended up, you know, using, uh, oops, where we go? Flash gets yellow. And then I think, had I think I gone through, and I don't know what the, the, this is current, called currently now. The golden yellow, I think, matches the, uh, the heraldry here pretty well. Um, so this went on pretty well, and I think it looks good. Again, I don't think I could freehand this. Well, I know I couldn't freehand this. Uh, so, oops, I apologize for that. So I, all in all, it went on pretty well. Then I added the black line, outline around it, and I'll get to the reasons why. So what are my thoughts? Uh, I've got a, I've made some notes here. What are my thoughts on the decals? Is it worth you getting? Um, oops, let's zoom this stuff out. Turn the macro off. Is it worth picking up? Is it worth the cost? Uh, let me go through the pros and the cons. So the pros, uh, the biggest pro, the overwhelming pro, the one that influenced my kind of judgment on them the most was the incredible amounts of variety and customization you can get with these. So you can go onto the Citadel 6 website and they've got probably 50 to 100 different designs for the fantasy ones. And you can go through and you say anywhere down to one night's worth to I did here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nights worth of decals. You say, I wanna have this one, that one, that one, you know, whatever. And they make a sheet for you and it's got everything on there. So you've got the, the shields for the knights, the, uh, the heater shields, the one that goes on their arms, 
uh, enough for the horses, uh, unit banners, and then even for s some of the individual shields for, uh, oh, where is it? So, like these guys here, and on the back, and on the front, which I did not put on. I'll get into that in a minute. So incredible amount of variety. And then you can do custom sheets as well. Again, I went through and I picked Henry V and I had him make a sheet of uh, men-at-arms uh, decals with that heraldry on it. And that's what these guys are. Uh, another thing that I really liked is the transfer sheets are thick. The problem with the GW ones is they're a little flimsy. Ooh, I was covering up the mic there. They're a little flimsy and they tear very, very easily. And these are definitely thick. I didn't have to worry about tearing it. You still have to be careful, but you didn't, I, I didn't worry about that it was just gonna dissolve in the water. And then Jeff at Citadel Sex provides some great customer service. He was very responsive with orders. He sent me proofs first so I could make sure, uh, you, digital proofs to make sure uh, I liked what he put together. I, I tweaked some things. Uh, very helpful. So, and uh, he's involved in the wargaming business. I, as I, or he, he may be a wargamer himself. As I said, he's on the Bretonian forum. Uh, for any potential negatives, it's not a negative in itself. It's just it was a steep learning curve with this. And what I wanted to show you is, and again, this is this goes to the customer service that goes along with this. But the amount of instructions that he puts together to put these make these transfers work. It's almost like a contract. I highly recommend you read through this because I've done a number of transfers. You can see them on my, on my you know, other Bretonians. I've done it before. You really have to kind of pay attention with this um, for a couple of reasons. On the GW decals, they are pre-cut. So you just go through and you get the paper wet and, and you've just got a little bit around all the edges. On these sheets, the way they come, you actually have to go through and you do the edges yourself, which gives you a bit more flexibility, but you have to go through there and he spends a lot of time in the directions talking about, don't put your knife in. So you cut around the outer edge, you know, give yourself some margin and then go through and very carefully trim around. If you push too hard, you can pull some of the color off. And that happened to me at a couple different occasions particularly on some of these. I'll turn the macro back on here. Okay, so can you see, see this one right here? This one I tried to go through and I just nicked it with the knife and it scraped off the top little bit of the decal. And I had a pretty tough time uh, with a lot of the smaller decals. They were, they were a challenge for me. And I think with practice I'd be okay with them but I kind of, I didn't want to say I, I, I gave up, but the juice wasn't worth the squeeze, which is why on this model, the individual shields got, um, they just got painted silver and I might go back and paint them yellow again. Or if I feel ambitious, I'll go through and I'll, and I'll pick out all of these ones and I'll put it back on the Pegasus and the other knights. Uh, while the thickness is a good thing in terms of kind of the durability of the decals as you're moving them around and putting them on the model, it does add a, you, you have to be careful with blending the edges onto the model. The GW ones are so thin, they transfer on and you just put a, a coat of um, gloss varnish over them, they blend right in. And then you can, then you just, I, I, I do a coat of gloss over it and uh, after I, after I'm done, and then I spray matte varnish and they disappear. Um, no problems with that. These are thicker, and so it requires a little bit more work, and that's one of the reasons why on these and on this, I did the outer edge outline to kind of blend it in. And I don't think it looks bad at all. It just, it's a little bit of extra work. Uh, I, because of the thickness, and then with every decals, I strongly recommend people use um, micro saw and micro sets. I'm sure most of you who are uh, used to doing decals have probably seen this stuff before. Great stuff. And uh, you put micro set on first to kind of prep the um, prep where you're going to put the decal on. Then you put micro saw and it helps to actually 
melt or fuse the decal onto the location. It helps a lot with uh, Space Marine shoulder pads. I still have a hard, terrible time with them, but I think it's even more essential with this. Damn, I wish my camera didn't make me have to manually flip between that core knot. I don't know if it's going to show up here. There's a ridge here where, because this isn't a flat, you can see there's a pretty steep bend there. Uh, it didn't lay quite flat. It got it pretty flat, and it's enough that only I kind of know it's there. But it's definitely kind of had to, I would say, muscle the decals down. But it definitely required a little bit of work to make sure they laid flat. A couple of coats of the Microsol to make sure. And, and, and to his credit, Jeff talks about that in his uh, set of directions. So it just, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more work than you might be used to with the GW1s. And you should just be prepared for that and then to do a little bit of the edge blending and then think ahead on the paint. You know, don't, basically don't do dumb stuff like I did <laughs> on this one. Uh, and lastly, the price. I'm not going to go through kind of the details because uh, Jeff could change this in the future. I obviously haven't talked to him about this. I haven't talked to him, told him that I'm doing a video. Not that you care with all of, uh, you know, my 26 subscribers as of today. Uh, this, so this sheet is so you get enough for four nights, uh, runs five pounds. And that might seem a little steep, but if you go online and you try to find, you know, on eBay, a sheet of the, uh, the GW decals, they're probably going to be more expensive than that. And you're not going to get the match set and you're not going to get the amount of details. Uh, I know that... I spent a fair bit on this, but I also plan on putting a lot of time and effort into the models, and I know that my freehand isn't good enough to do a lot of what probably the rest of you can do with really kind of changing things up or doing checkered patterns or tartans. Well, I guess you wouldn't do tartans, but you, you get the idea. Drawing, drawing a two crows on there or, you know, Something like this. I just, it's beyond my abilities. So I think it's well worth the money. Um, I will admit at the beginning when I saw it, I was like, well, that's an awful lot for decals. But in the long run, I think it's well worth it. So what is, what, so what's Jason's overall assessment? What's my overall view of the decals? I think it's an outstanding product, particularly if you're going to put a lot of time and effort into your Bretonian army. Because again, my personal view is that the Bretonians need attention to detail more than probably any other army out there, even more than Empire, which I think is it's probably its near peer competitor in terms of making things look cool, look different, having a lot of individuality. And so what you could do is you can, you know, if this is probably way down the arcane, there might be like two or three out there that actually do this, but you could have a set of Bretonians that it could just be any normal knights, but if you want to have a separate army that you could, say, use for the Arthurian expansion for Warhammer Ancient Battles, here you go. You could fight this out, and you could really kind of nerd out on some of the, uh, the authentic heraldry. So I, all in all, I think it's a great product. It's not as user-friendly, I think. I want to say user-friendly. It's not kind of as pick-up-and-go. It's not like the decals that you have in your model airplane kits. It takes a little bit of extra work and time and preparation. But in the end of the day, I think, um, and I probably didn't do it justice here with my paint job, but I think it is well worth the little bit of extra time and effort. And considering that most of us are putting in hours on each individual model, doing a, putting in a little bit more time in to have great-looking decals is, is well worth it. So in sum, great product. Definitely reach out to uh, Jeff at uh, Citadel 6. Uh, I will put those web page and email in the liner notes. And as always, uh, feel free to shoot me any questions. Uh, like and subscribe if you're so inclined. And I uh, hope you guys had a great weekend and happy wargaming.